أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد عن خطى الإيمان دربنا درب قويم دربنا درب قويم بالهدى القرآن أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد عن خطى الإيمان دربنا درب قويم دربنا درب قويم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أبدا الأفلاك والأرضين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء سيد الكونين إمام الحرمين إمام القبلتين إمام الأتقياء نبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وآدم بين الماء والطين فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن الكريم والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر صدق الله وصدق رسول ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين أما بعد Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has favored us with numerous favors And from amongst them there are some That every individual and every living creature benefits it with Is in need of And one of those is that of ma and that of water such a favor that sometimes we look at it as being insignificant. And apart from those things that are naturally and normally known, with regards to its importance, today's short talk will never be able to do justice to its importance. But to highlight just a few, in the life of a mu'min and in the life of a believer, how great such a commodity and how great such a ni'mah and how great such a creation of Allah is. Ismail alayhi salam, when he was born and his mother was looking in Mecca when it is thirst overcame him and he was looking and she was running between Safa and Marwa. It was at the feet of this Nabi to come. It was at the feet of Ismail alayhi salam that one of the greatest springs in humanity emanated and came forth the well of Zamzam. It came about for a Nabi for the usage of another Nabi. It came about at the feet of Ismail alayhi salam. For the usage by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That when it was time for him to actually ascend and for Mi'raj, all the things that came, came from heaven with the malaika and the angels to split the chest of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Except one thing. The water that was used to wash his heart was the same water of Zamzam. So how great this water has to be. That when every single thing is coming from Jannah, the tree is from Jannah, Iman is there, so many things present, yet still Ma'uz Zamzam is used, something of this dunya, how excellent and how great it is. And today, subhanAllah, you and I are able to benefit from, to taste, to drink and then make dua. That when it is people will travel for Hajj and Umrah, sometimes all that we want from them is one little bit of Zamzam, one little sip of water, and that is Kafa, and that is sufficient. That people with ailments and people with sickness, that when they get it, they drink and they make dua, they drink and they make dua. How excellent a commodity this water is. When it is, we look back in the time of Musa, alayhi salam, Pharaoh the tyrant. Wanting to dominate and wanting to do everything possible towards those people who will say that Allah is one and not Fir'aun. That Fir'aun, you are not the Ilah, that you are not a God. So much so, Fir'aun took it upon his own self to destroy his very own wife, Asiya. He killed her on account of her believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How cruel a man he must have been. When it came the order of Musa to Musa alayhi salam, that, O oh Musa, you and the Bani Israel, you are my great from here. 
When they came to the Red Sea and they crossed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a spectacle. That the very sea, that waves are flowing on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it as such. That it splits into 12 pieces. The 12 tribes of the Bani Israel, they walk through this water. And Allah uses this very same water. On one hand as a mercy. On one hand as an indication to his jalal and greatness. And on the other hand, this very water in a few minutes time is used as a destruction towards Fir'aun. His entire people, the same very water that's there. Water is something so significant and great. Allah uses it sometimes as a rahmat and mercy. As other times, Allah uses it as means of destruction. When it came to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, and people used to come to the Nabi of Allah, sometimes they will go out on ghazwa. They will go out on varying expeditions. And they will complain to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that, O oh, Nabi of Allah, with us we have no water to drink. That, O oh, Nabi of Allah, with us there is no water to purify ourselves. What to do, O oh, Rasul? From the Mubarak fingers of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, water will spring forth and water will gush forth just for his companions to fill their skins, just for his companions to fill their containers so that they are able to utilize. So for a mu'min and for a believer, Water is not just one or two things alone. It has so many other dimensions to it. And most importantly, when it comes towards you and I, water is so important because it's a suburb and it's a means of our taharat and it's a means of our purification. And there are many guidelines given by the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about how to treat this so excellent commodity that although it's so abundant, it's so, all about it can be found. Yet still the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives some very sweet special guidelines concerning it. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala says that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يبولن أحدكم في الماء الدائم الذي لا يجري That all human beings, none of you should urinate in stagnant water. That doesn't flow. And when that occurs, ثُمَّ يَغْتَسِلُ فِي And then you are going to take a bath with that water. When the water is in a small amount, water is such an essential element that is required by everybody. When it becomes defiled, the mu'min cannot use it, not even the non-Muslim can use it. Not even for cooking, for cleansing, nothing. Why then do you want to be such an individual and such a person that is causing harm to your very own self because you yourself cannot use it to purify? Why it is you are causing harm to other individuals and people as well? And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and by extension humanity that treat water well. Try your best to preserve and try your best to conserve because everybody is in need of it. And when we notice Ramadan, that come Ramadan, everybody breaks their fast. And when we look on the tables and we look on the dastakhan, all that remains is half bottles of water. The only place that that ends up is only into the trash and only into the bin. Come the month of Ramadan, so much israf and wastage with such an essential commodity. Something so great that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is emphasizing, preserve, conserve, make sure and do not waste it at all. In another tradition, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, marra bi Sa'din wa huwa yatawadhaw. He passed by Sa'd ibn Abi Waqasa radiallahu ta'ala an. And Sa'd radiallahu ta'ala an, he was making wudu. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Sa'd, he says, O oh, Sa'd, what is this wastage that is you are doing when it comes towards making wudu? Sadar radiallahu ta'ala says to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Afil wudu is saraf? That O Nabi of Allah, can I waste water while making wudu? And we understand and know how important wudu is. That taharat and purification is the key to salat and salat is the key to jannah. We understand how important that is. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling Sa'd that, O oh, Sa'd, why it is that you are wasting this water for? 
Why it is you are whisked in the water? And Saad gives an equivalent or he gives so, uh, some sort of reasonable response. That, oh, Nabi of Allah, in wudu as well can I whist? Even in that amal that's supposed to bring me closer to Allah, that's supposed to be a means for me entering into Jannah, by me doing that, that is also wistage. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala, وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فِي نَهْرٍ جَارٍ O Sa'ad, wistage can still occur even if you are on a flowing river. Commentators explain, if we are on a flowing river, and the water is constantly moving, and we are scooping out the water and we are utilizing it for wudu, the remnants are going to fall back in this very water and be taken down. So where then is wastage? Where then are you actually wasting on a river that is flowing? There is hardly any wastage that is occurring there. Yet still the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling Sad, even if you are on a river that is flowing, wastage can still take place. Commentators explain that when it is, the possibility of wastage in this scenario is so grim, so small, so minuscule and so minute. Imagine in all of those other instances in the life of an individual where the possibility of wastage is so much more, how then can we ever waste those commodities? How then can we ever waste at other times then when the warning is in such a scenario that wasting is almost, is so difficult. And this is the advice given to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today we talk about conservation and we talk about human, humanitarian efforts and we talk about all of those helps and we fail to study the seerah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We fail to even look at the teachings of our own Nabi. What did he teach us concerning ma and concerning water? And these are just two traditions from the multitude of traditions that are there concerning ma and concerning water. Towards you and I, we are individuals and we are people who are in contact with this essential commodity every single day. But more important is the sustaining of life. For we consume and we drink water every single day. If it is we were to follow the sunnahs of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in this one act of ibadah, we will become such individuals who will benefit from the barakat of following the sunnahs of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this very dunya. And it will also be a sign of our love for the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. For the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala, they used to hold on to the practices of the Nabi on account of it being a practice of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today many a people, they don't practice the practices of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on account of it only being a practice of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In other words, it's not compulsory. What a vast difference between the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and the way that sometimes we approach the teachings of the Rasul. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he informs and he tells humanity, that before you do anything, say Bismillah. And why do we say Bismillah? Mufti Muhammad Shafi alayhi rahma, he gives an excellent response. Why is Bismillah said before it is we do all of these different amals? Bismillah, it's that connection between the servant to his creator. That we have that bottle of water and we have that glass in front of us. And the thought supposed to go through our minds. That look at the kindness that my Allah has done. That he has presented one cup and one glass of water before me. He goes on to explain that on the face of the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created such an excellent system. Whereby he has created such waters that are saline, that are salted. However, that water is not portable to you and I. We cannot even consume it. Millions of dollars are spent just to take the same water and make it the water in which individuals can drink. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has taken such a responsibility with the usage of the clouds that is the same very thing that is occurring. 
from the evaporation of this very salted water to varying processes and send back as rain. Allah has a whole decent plant floating above our heads, yet still we hardly even recognize the jalal and the greatness of Allah. That he sends one cup of water to you and I, and we hardly recognize that all of these processes had just taken place. He explains that when Allah sends his man, when Allah sends his matar, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his rain to humanity, all is not just sent to the face of the earth as water. For some of them, they are converted into ice. They are held up on the mountains. Another portion of them, they sink beneath into the ground. Another portion of them, they flow into the rivers, all fulfilling a specific purpose. Had all been one, it would have been difficult for human beings to live. Allah had taken responsibility in many different avenues to provide the same water for us. So when we say Bismillah, it is us thinking now, how many processes this one or 200 mils of water must have gone through just for me to take it within my very body. Within me just to take a few sips of it for me to drink this very water. What has my Allah done for me? The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that when it is you are about to drink water, that you should sit down and drink for the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that no rajul and no man should stand and drink. For it's from etiquette that when it is that you want to drink, to sit down. It looks so much more elegant and so much more beautiful. So much more composure is on an individual when it is he adopts such practices. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam further illustrates that such an individual, when it is he sits down, he should drink initially. We're taking three sips of water and do not drink like the drinking of a camel. Hey, distinguish yourself between that of the animals and a human being. A person who is elegant, a person who has qualities, a person who has adab, a person who is recognized in the court of Allah and is a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a great individual and a great person. With simple practices, we shine in the court of Allah. We shine in the court of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nawfal bin Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala and he says, I looked at the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam drinking. And I saw that before he drank, he will say Bismillah. And at the end of it, he will say Alhamdulillah. Every single day you and I, we drink. It takes nothing from us to adopt the sunnats of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Adopt the sunnat of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we are gaining nearness to Allah. We are gaining the love of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We will be practicing on such etiquettes. On such well-being that are noble and righteous, that are excellent and great, and it takes nothing from us. Once Harun al-Rashid, the great king, he went out on a hunting expedition. And when he went out on his hunting expedition, somehow he became lost. When it is he became lost, he came to a hut. And he was parched, he was thirsty. The forest, it drew all the moisture from him. And the person, he presented one glass of water to Harun al-Rashid. And he said, oh Harun al-Rashid, here. Yeah. As Harun al-Rashid takes the glass of water and he puts it to his lips, he says, before you consume it, can I ask you one question? He says that you right now you are in the throes of death. You are so thirsty right now. If it is that you had to pay for this glass of water, because of your thirst, O oh Harun al-Rashid, how much will you pay for it? Harun al-Rashid says, I will give half of my kingdom. When thirst grips a man, he is willing to give anything just to quench it. Harun al-Rashid, the king of the time, says, I will give half of my kingdom. The man he then said to him, O oh Harun al-Rashid, if it is that after you had consumed this one glass of water, that the pains became so difficult that you are unable to urinate. And for those individuals and people who may have suffered different types of stones, maybe could relate. If it is after consuming this bit of water, O oh Harun al Rashid, you are unable to urinate and you are unable to pass it out, what will you pay for a procedure? What will you pay for it to leave your body? Harun al Rashid says, I will give the remaining half of my kingdom for it. 
The man he then gave Harun and Rashid such a lesson, and it's a lesson for you and I as well. The man he then said to Harun and Rashid, that your entire kingdom, O Harun, is simply for one glass of water to enter you and for one glass of water to leave you. Today we drink freely. And alhamdulillah, Allah grants us the ability to also use the washroom freely as well. For these are ni'mah, these are favors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are not simple ordinary favors. These are favors of great magnitude. They are huge favors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That today we live in such societies that we don't have to dig wells anymore. Water is right there. The accessibility to it is so easy. Despite it being so easy, it doesn't give us the right to waste it. It doesn't give us the right to misuse it. For this week gone was recognized, one of the days was recognized as world's water day. For a mu'min and for a believer, every day is that day. For every day, if it's utilized properly, if we were to drink and according to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every day we'll be gaining stages closer to Allah. Every single day we'll be gaining nearness to the proximity of the love of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So for simple little things, not taught to us this week, not taught to us last week, but taught by the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so long, somehow along the way sometimes we forget. Sometimes we take it for granted. It is for us to start practicing as well as to teach it towards our young ones as well. For if we don't practice the sunnah and we don't encourage them to practice the sunnah, come second generation, who will practice the sunnah of the Rasul? Who will even know about the sunnahs of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Who will adhere to the greatness of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq. To recognize how great a favor water actually is. For us to utilize it properly. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, to grant us that tawfiq. That when it is we use this water, we gain nearness to him. And come the day of qiyamah. This favor is not going to be used against us, but rather because of how we treat it, it's going to be as using for us on the day of Qiyamah, so that we can attain much rank, so that we can attain closeness to Allah, so that we can attain Jannah and Paradise. May Allah grant us Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ahmiyat and the importance of what has been said, and to bring it practically into our lives. Wa akhir da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Abadan lalan nahid, abadan lalan nahid, abadan lalan nahid an khuta al-imani. Darbuna darbun qawim, darbuna darbun qawim bil huda al-qur'ani. Abadan lalan nahid, abadan lalan nahid, abadan lalan nahid an khuta al-imani. دربنا درب قوي دربنا درب قوي بالقرآن سائر في طريق الحق يا جند الله سائر في طريق الحق يا جند الله